Joining us on the line is our very good friend on the Balabao World Cup program, Mr. Clint Bolton. Clint, first question we've got to ask you, is football coming home? <laughs> um, on last uh, night's performance or this morning's performance, I would say no, uh, <laughs> because it wasn't particularly exciting or or enterprising. They didn't create many goal-scoring moments, so no at the moment. But importantly, in the knockout stage, they got a result. So if anything, there's this mental barrier that uh, maybe they've gotten past just with that result. So. But they've got to improve. Uh, they're on the easy side of the draw. Um, if they do get to a final, they, will, they probably won't beat a Brazil or a France or a Belgium. As a former goalkeeper yourself, what was there something that Jordan Pickford did in that during that penalty shootout that showed why he was able to save that penalty? Uh, the, the key things in the penalties in general are always stay up as long as possible. And when you go, go as hard as you can. And, and that's what Pickford did. It's not, it's not rocket science. There's some research that goes into the penalty takers and which way they go and such. But it's always, it's always difficult to pick a tell on a, on a penalty taker in the moment. So he did as well as he could. Contrast that with Ospina, the Colombian keeper, who on that last penalty, the dire penalty, he should have saved that. Mm. But he just simply didn't go hard and didn't get a strong enough hand on it. So... So Pickford did as well as he could. I was, I was nervous for the guy because traditionally English keepers, they somehow have a moment where they just they just have a howler. But um, he's doing the job. That's important. Um, but certainly wasn't pretty, but it doesn't matter. Clinton, it's Braden here. As a former goalkeeper, how do you feel going into a penalty shootout? Do you feel as if the weight's all on your shoulders, win or lose? No, no, it's the opposite. It's counterintuitive to what most people think. You, you think there's this weight of pressure on you, but it's not because you're not expected to save. So the expectation is on the penalty taker, and that releases the pressure from you. If you don't save it, you're not the story. It doesn't matter. Um, so it's, it's only it's only hero or, or not for a goalkeeper. So it's strange because 90 minutes of a match, constant pressure, the most pressurised position... But on any penalty, that pressure's released. Now, at the start of the, the World Cup, there were really not a lot of expectation on the, the English players to progress as far as they have. Now that they're on the easier side of the draw, there's not a lot of competition on them. Is it a must now that they make the, that they make the final? Is it the expectations now that they have to make the final? Oh, I'm sure that that'll come, but it's not easy. It's not easy. They're up against Sweden, who have proven tough to beat so far in this tournament. They don't score a lot of goals, but they've had three clean sheets out of four matches. Just lost to Germany in that last last minute with the Cruz free kick. So, firstly, Sweden will not be easy whatsoever. And what the match against Colombia showed is they found it really difficult to break teams that sit deep down. And... I don't know if it was a bit of stage fright with England. I know a couple of players didn't play well in Sterling and, and Dali Alley in particular. But there's a lot of room for improvement if they're going to create enough goal-scoring opportunities against the Swedish team that have always scored first in the four matches and got the job done. So that's firstly going to be tough. And then beyond that, I think they'll play Croatia if they get past Sweden because I get the feeling that Russia's great role so far this tournament will come to an end against Croatia so Croatia are as good as any team going around at the moment don't you worry about that so it's not a given that they get to the final uh, Clint just on the Socceroos because I don't think we've spoken to you since uh, the last game how do you rate their performance as a whole uh, in this World Cup um, well firstly the players should be applauded congratulated they played with great distinction uh, at times good, good quality under the circumstances that were given to them and the environment that they were in. Um, from every other point of view, for me, it's been a failure. And that's at a governance level in in this regressive attitude or step we've taken backwards in appointing Bert Van Marbe to play the, uh, you know, a style of football that will not take us into the future. It was purely about a result. And, and when they made it about result, it was that we would get out of the group, so we failed there. That's another failure. 
and when I look at ind- individual matches, each match we played across the three, there was opportunities to win each and every one of them. But we failed to take that opportunity, and that lies on the coach's shoulder, the manager. So, for example, first game against France, we go 1-1 opportunity to really go for the win there because France are on the back foot. We don't wear this attitude of we're happy with a point. So that was a really poor moment, I thought. Second game, same sort of thing. You know, even from the start, we were really playing the same style of football where it was always going to be a limited goal-scoring opportunities. And then late in the game, we don't throw on our best goal-scoring option being Tim Cale or Jamie McLaren. And then the third game, the same start approach um, we need to score to win and seriously uh, if we play that style of football it's just we got what we deserved in a lot of ways but as far as the players go they were fantastic they did as well as they could in the situation and the environment they were given uh, we had Ralph Barber on the show last week and we asked him the question if our lack of goals or our lack of goal scoring is a fundamental problem with Australian football or if it is just the, the problem of the players that we had at the World Cup. What do you believe it is? Well, it's, it's a long-term issue. There's not enough, not just goal scorers, but quality, creative players. And Arzani highlights that because he's head and shoulders above anything else going around. So we need to produce more of that type of player in that wide position or in the midfield or up front that can score goals. So there's clearly clearly a development issue and that. And that's where the real disconnect is, and that's and that's at a, an age where you, you know a young age and moving into your teenage years. That's not necessarily when you get into the A League and you're looking to get a spot in the A League. That's beyond the best development years. So we've got to look to the root of the problem, and that is early in development. Um, as far as the World Cup goes, we had the strikers there to to do something in matches. You had Jamie McLaren in good goal scoring form at club. And then you had Tim Cale, who you saw in the third match against Peru. He creates chaos. And it's mind-boggling that we then didn't use those players. So so there's the World Cup, we had the players. But overall, long-term, there's a good hard look that needs to be had with, with the development phase of Australian football. Uh, now, Clint, it's Fraser here. Um, do you think we've passed that stage of actually just being happy to qualify and make up for the numbers? Do you think we need to, uh, I guess, put ourselves further into the round of 16 and then um, go from there? No, we should never take for granted how difficult it is to get there. And I think we have in recent times. And Asia's not easy to get there now. Um, so we should never take it for granted that it's just a given that we get there in the first place, that's for sure. Uh, but the reality is, with this group of players, this transitional period, we're not. if we get there, it's going to be difficult for us. So expectations, for whatever reason, they're unrealistic. They rose for this World Cup in this belief we'll get out of the group. No, no, we were the, the underdog in that group. And then the results played out as, as expected, in my mind. So... The thought that we just progress from the group is well beyond where we actually are. So, so no, we should be happy we're there and competing uh, and then temper our expectations when we're there because we're playing against unbelievable opposition and we're not to that level yet. You speak of that, but I don't know. From a player's point of view, how difficult is it heading into the last two tournaments? All of a sudden, we've qualified under one manager. Poster Koglu took over prior to... 2014, and then Van Marwe 2018. How difficult is it to change just a whole system in basically one or two camps before a tournament? Difficult, yeah. It, it, because of how vast the difference was between the two playing styles. So that's difficult. And that's why the players need to, uh, to be congratulated and applauded for what they dished out. And Although it's, it's a lot easier to go from playing the proactive style of Ange back to a really regressive style under Bird, that's the easy way to go. It's harder to go from the other way, if you know what I mean, which Saudi Arabia, for example, tried to do in their first match and they got smacked 5 nil. So it's difficult. Um, the best players in the world find it hard. So a group of players that, that uh, you know, they're, they're good players, that's what they are, uh, would always find it difficult. But they did as well as they could. So, But the problem, you've just highlighted the real problem, and that is that we don't have a, 
a set, long, big-term vision with our playing style and stick to it. You know, it was difficult towards the end of the qualification, but don't veer off the path. We're going to have bumps. The road to the top isn't easy. So have a long-term vision, stick to it when things get tough. Don't take your eye off the long-term goal. Ride the bumps out, refocus, and and get back on the path. But we don't have that path at the moment. That's that's really been um, identified and explained, and and that's where the real issue is. All right, back to the World Cup. Overall, your your opinion on the World Cup has it been a success so far? Has it the the shock results? Have they been good for the overall football of the World Cup? Cup was Italia 90 and it was and I was a youngster watching that and I was just uh, I was in love with the game and watching the World Cup back then was exceptional and it's and it's not as exciting as what it is now but it's taken me back to that era where I'm just loving football again and and the fact that it's open is great that's that's always healthy for world football um, you know the, the powerhouses have struggled which is which is interesting in itself but a good sign I think and but overall, fantastic stuff. Uh, I think I don't necessarily think it's been the best football overall. We haven't seen a lot of fantastic goals in open play. We've seen a lot of good strikes, long-range strikes. Uh, we've seen a lot of set-piece goals, penalties. So it, it's been a very interesting World Cup. And But ultimately, I've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed working it and just watching. I've watched every game, so it's been fantastic. Now, speaking about the, the penalties, do you think um, the referees have more confidence in, in giving giving a penalty because um, they've got the VAR at the back of their minds and uh, do you reckon they're just sticking to their guns a bit more now? No, no, I think it's the opposite. I think they're less less likely to give decisions because they have the, the safety blanket of a VAR which can, which can fix those errors. So I think it's the opposite. I think we've got weaker officials. We will have weaker officials because of VAR. That's my thinking. That's my gut. Uh, and that's what I've seen in the A League, that's for sure. Um, but it's been an interesting one with the VAR. They've, they've got plenty right, but they've certainly got plenty wrong as well, in my mind. Um, so VAR is it's here to stay. Let's be honest. So you just get you accept that it's here to stay, and you get on with it. But it's not for me. And I, I firmly believe, like stats come out. You know, we're getting more things right and all this, but I firmly believe they're false positives because because the referees are getting weaker and less less uh, less likely to make a 50-50 call in the moment, let it ride and let the VAR deal with it. When we interviewed you in our preview program, you had a lot of high hopes for Argentina and Lionel Messi. Yeah, uh, hope. <laughs> yeah, hope exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't end well. Um, yeah. Le- uh, Messi's legacy does it is it tampered by this by this um, the performances at this World Cup and do you think we'll ever see him again at the World Cup? I don't think we'll see him again. Firstly, uh, I think the weight of the world. He's already quit once, so I firmly believe he'll do it again. And uh, it doesn't tarnish his legacy for me. Uh, the 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 fact that he hasn't won a World Cup is would have taken him to another level. So he's still in the discussion as one of the greatest players of all time. And that discussion doesn't have a finite end. It's simply that subjective. So he will always be in that discussion. But if he wins a World Cup, he goes to another level in that discussion. So that's the only miss for Messi. But come on, <laughs> you can't deny how phenomenal he's, he's been for not only Barca, but also Argy. They, they wouldn't have got there without him. That's right. In the qualifiers, so... You know, and he's gotten them to three Copa America finals and the last World Cup final. So that's not bad, let's be honest. And the final question, who is your tip for the World Cup? Ah, I'm, I picked them at, at the start because they're a form team and they're just building nicely, Brazil. <laughs> Brazil will get it done. They don't concede, they're hard to beat and they've got just enough goals in them to get it done. <laughs> will, will Neymar score the winning goal? More than likely. I'll tell you what, <laughs> since Ronaldo and Messi are out of this comp, it feels like there's a hole there for Neymar to step into. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Clint. We appreciate having you on the show.